Hello my crafty friends, this is lesson 2 of the simpler tutorials for newer users of the Canvas Workspace downloadable version and I'm working on a Macbook. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use the sort of opportunity to show you how to adjust and make your own shapes within Brother Scan and Cut Canvas. So I'm going to start off and I'll just try that again. So this is the interface that we looked at before. We don't want it as big as that but we do want to try and make it a little bit wider so we've got a bit more space. So I'm just going to give the maximum space that I can while still being able to see the options that we're going to be using. So I'm going to click on this icon here which if you hover over it says shapes. Incidentally if you hover over any of the icons it will tell you what they're for. So we're going to click on a basic shape and I'm just going to bring on a square. Now I'm going to show you how to make a matting layer, a simple matting layer and then how to adjust the shape to make a shaped matting layer. So I'm just going to bring that square on and I'm going to duplicate it. Now you can either right click and hit duplicate or I've made the command for my Mac com um, control and command and D so got command and D as mine so that's just ways that you can do the duplication so right click duplicate or you can set your own um, to do it differently now I'm just going to put that one off to the side so I've got my basic square shape on the mat and I'm going to give it a colour from the properties box and we'll just make it a deep purple to start with okay now if I want a mat that fits that shape exactly all I need to do is go on the edit menu and we need to create right down at the bottom it says offset now if we want an offset line we can either make it inward or outward and we'll do both so we'll do an inward an outward one on this one first and it, this one's not point two zero inches you can take that down to 0 0.04 inches if you wish we'll keep it at 0 0.12 so that it's easy to see on the screen and we're going to leave it i think we'll have it bevel and we'll leave as is and say okay so when we click off now we can see if we just zoom in onto the mat a little bit that we now have a matting shape behind okay so that's the wall it's actually the one that's on top and i know that it's the shape behind that's on top because when i click in the center it doesn't select the purple square it selects the one underneath alternatively we can look at the layers palette and we can see clearly now that the shape that has no colour is at the top. If we want it so that the shape is at the bottom, then we need to bring the purple one up to the top. Now if I select that one, you can see that that's selected. And I could make that a shape, a colour of its own, make it the lighter colour. And that's where we're up to. So now we'd have a perfect matting layer for that shape. Alternatively to going outward, we could go offset and this, this time collect, select inward and we'll keep the offset the same. We'll leave it as bevel because we want the angles to be square and we'll say we'll leave it as is and we'll say OK. So now you can just about see that that one has placed another square on top of the, the square that we started with. And if we give that some colour, so we'll go on to the properties box and click on that. And if we make that a nice pale colour, you can now see that we've got three layers that would map together perfectly. You could either have that one on there and have a bigger offset or that one on there and have a smaller offset. And then you can have another layer on top of that. So that's how you make your layers. And it doesn't matter what the shape is if we select a more complicated shape. So let's go to an oval. Or, or we'll do a half circle so you can see. So in the half circle one, 
again, if we just give it some colour in the properties box, and we'll make it a nice purple colour. And if we click on the shape, and we create an offset again by clicking on edit, and then offset, and then say inward, and this time we'll try round, because it's got a rounded top, and say OK. And now you can see that it's brought in a shape there. If we want to colour it, we go on the paintbrush and the, make sure that we've got it highlighted. Oops, I've got the, gone to that mode now. So click on it, highlight it and colour it. Again, if I go back onto that shape, if I want to go outwards, I can create an offset. Go outwards by clicking this box and say OK. So that's what we've got there. And instead of it being a pointed bit there, now it's got rounded. So that's the difference. Can you see on here, it's slightly rounded there. So if we did it again, created the offset, go outward, but make it bevel, it should keep it a perfect square there. So where it's rounded the corner off there, it's kept the corner straight. So if you want to keep your corners, make sure you go on to make sure you go on to bevel. And if you want the corners rounded, then click on round. Okay. So that's how you create your basic matting layers. And it doesn't matter what your shape is. If you use the offset function, it will do it proportionally so that all the borders at the bottom and all around the curve are going to be exactly the same distance apart. So I'm just going to get rid of those now and I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom sort of ideas. Now, this involves using the remove overlap function and another shape. And what I'm going to do is bring on a shape and use it to cut this shape. So basically, I'm going to bring on a circle. So I'm going to bring on a circle by clicking on it and dragging it onto my map. And then like to close the shapes box and then I've got more space to do what I want to do. I'm then going to shrink it down and I'm going to place it so that I can get an idea what it's looking like there. I'm then going to duplicate it and I'm going to drag it across here like so. Now, I'm going to drag just around those two circles and I'm going to line them up to the top and also I'm going to, now that they're lined up together so the tops are level to each other, I'm just going to move this, the square out of the way initially and then I'm going to right just let go again. I'm going to drag around both of them to keep them selected and then I'm going to group them like so. I'm then going to line them up centrally to my square or my rectangle if you will and I'm going to bring it up to the circle. So I'm just using my arrow keys to bring it up to there like so, until it gets to a position that I find pleasing. So now I'm going to click to make sure that the shape that's going to get punched out is on the top and I'm going to select both and I'm going to go on create the overlap. I'm just going to make a duplicate. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it. I'll do it a different way. I'm going to get them linked together like that. So everything's selected and I'm going to process the overlap in the edit menu and I'm going to hit remove overlap. And what's happened there is you can see that that has punched out that top part of our square, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get rid of those two, like so, and I'm going to make a duplicate of this and I'm going to line it up centrally and in the middle. And then I'm just going to click on the top one and I'm going to flip it vertically. Okay. So now that one's on top and the other one is underneath. And all I'm going to do then 
is I'm going to bring on oops sorry excuse me so I've got that there like so and I'm just going to sorry I just want both of them to be lined up so that you can see the ends and I'm going to shunt it along a little bit until it's like something like that I'm going to drag around each and I'm going to weld so now we know we've got those and they're equal at the top and bottom and if we want to make it a perfect square again now undo change the aspect ratio and change it to four and four and that will alter the corners proportionally so that they're still the same so four inches by four inches and then we've got a perfect square with notched out corners so that's how you can make a, a shaped with punched out corners matting layer so what you would do then you would follow the same steps create an offset and we want to go outward or we can go inward and i think we'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see say okay and that's brought us a shape on that's bigger now if it does this and it seems to distort try it on the other setting so try it on rounded and see if that makes any difference and say okay and although it has distorted it somewhat i actually am preferring the shape that it's doing now rather than what it did before but what you could always do as well instead of going in outwards you could go inwards so that you're not losing any of that shape and say okay and then you get that and you could even then if you wanted to if i undo that for a second and i just do the take it again it's four by four if i create an offset and make it a little bit bigger so that it's about half an inch so i'm going to go 0 0.5 say okay and that will create an offset like so so what you can do then is select both and sub subtract and that will give you a frame. So you could then have, if we take it back a layer, take it back, we could go the other way, offset, and we'll make it 0 0.25 and say OK. And we're here. And if we want to get a, a, a mat of that offset and we're going to go outwards, say OK. So now we've got three different types of layers for this particular file. So we can move that one out the way. We could actually punch that one out. And then we've got a matting layer that's a frame that can fit on top of another matting layer. So if you will... You can then, if you want to line them up to get an idea of what they're going to look like on screen, just use your align middle and centre. And then you could, to see that that one underneath is a different colour, go on the paint icon and let's make it a nice pale blue. So now you've got a matting layer and also a frame. Okay, so that's how you can create matting layers. Um, what you would do then is you would want to export your project so you would click on file at the top look for file and export as FCM whoops some of them oh I know it's because we left a shape outside if you if you get that error message and it's a good way, way to highlight it if you get that error message that props up just then it's because you've got a shape that's not fitting on the in between these red dotted lines which is actually the limit to where you can cut to so once you've got everything on your mat you can go file export fcm file give it a name so i'm going to just call it mat layers and i'd save it to my desktop so it's easy to find and that would save it to the desktop i can also from here use this option to transfer it across to my wi-fi enabled scan and cut cm900 so I'm just going to zoom back out so we can see them. Oh, zoomed in, not out. Zoom on, on, on zoom to 
and we'll just go 50% and then we can see what we've got. So we've got all these potential for different layers and you could make those in any size you wish. So whatever size works for you, you can do it. Right, so this is lesson two, how to create matting layers from basic shapes and how to manipulate basic shapes to create your own shapes. All right, I hope you've enjoyed lesson two. Please keep watching out for lesson three and I'll see you next time. And oh, and don't forget, if you have have enjoyed the video, like, share and subscribe and tell your friends where to find me. Thanks and I'll see you soon. Bye.